Um, let's all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, in the middle of the meeting, justice for all. Okay. Motion to approve the minutes of the regular meeting for August 29th, 2022. Move it. Okay, so second. Second by Kelly. Any additions or deletions to the agenda, Mr. Brown? Oh, we got to vote on that. Perfect. Oh, we have to vote on that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All in favor? All in favor? <laughs> Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> All right. Pass. Thank you. Now to the next one. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's my You're first good. time You're doing, doing this. Doing yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Any additions or deletions to the agenda, Mr. Uh, yes. Two quick things on page seven. Item one uh, for the audit. It should say the internal audit of purchasing, not budgeting. And on page 12, item eight needs to be removed from the agenda, please. The resolution to remove intermodal assignments. Item eight, removed. You don't have to vote on it, we just remove it? Yes. Here. He's already been appointed, we're gonna keep him appointed. Okay. And that is all I have. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, another long rainstorm that did not cause RFA to float away. So I feel good we survived another rainstorm. We're moving in the right direction with the weather. Uh, welcome to Danielle Dayudo, who is our student board member. We appreciate you being here. Uh, luckily for Danielle, uh, Elaine is flying the ship tonight, so there's probably one person more nervous than you. <laughs> so, uh, so that's helpful, right? So doing a great job. Keep it up. Um, in any event, uh, first great first week of school. Uh, I know we've been in technically two weeks for our staff, and some of the students were in for a half week before, but uh, we're off and rolling. Uh, there's always bumps and bruises, things that don't go great, things that could be done better. But I think, by and large, uh, it's a fantastic opening. I thank our, uh, thank all of our administrators, teachers, support staff, uh, everything that people have done to try and keep things moving in a great direction. If you are have not been paying attention, the COVID uh, stuff continues to be on the rise. We continue to get hit with uh, our, our bus drivers are the most challenging right now. Um, however. Uh, starting to creep in the students and staff. So just be reminded for those folks out there that if you uh, do have COVID, the recommendations from the CDC are that you remain home for five days, isolate, wear a mask after that. Again, there are zero COVID restrictions and requirements in public schools this year, uh, simply recommendations. Um, so if you have questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, we do our best to help folks through that, but um, it does seem to be that that first week got a lot of people with the common cold, the strep throat, the COVID. It, it could be any number of things, but it's that welcome back to uh, welcome back to school illness that we all love. And those of you that have littles really know that one. <laughs> Kindergarten and pre-K get it the worst. Uh, just a quick update. The biggest bugaboo we've been having, as you probably know, are athletic shuttles. They continue to be an issue with, uh, and it's mainly due to driver shortages and illness. Um, so we're working on that right now. The, the biggest problem is we can't pull drivers off the routes to get kids home from school to worry about athletics. So I do remind people, I know it sounds cold, but athletic shuttles are a privilege. They are not required. It's just something we do only because most of our sports programs are not in the school. So another reason why we need to get our athletic complexes at our face, so we don't have to worry about stuff like this. Um, Rob's been working really, uh, really hard on trying to find an alternative and I think we're starting to have some conversations and we I, I hope that uh, I can't make the drivers get healthy and come to work but I do think we've got a pretty good option in the in the works to try and make sure that if there is a shortage with for a student that we're covered in another way to make sure we have busing to get kids to and from uh, we just got to iron out a few more things and I'll be able to talk a little more about with you but we do apologize for the inconvenience and I do think 
our coaches who who work hard in a scramble moment to try and make sure that their athletes know and families know if things are changing. Uh, a quick update that's important for families of anybody that is not a kindergartner right now. And the reason it's different for kindergartners is because we had a large number of kindergarten registrations at the last minute. So we're still sorting through some paperwork. But September 22nd is the deadline for students to have their New York State mandated vaccination requirements into school to their nurse. So if your child does not have their vaccination records up to date, they are required by law to be excluded from school. Uh, and I know this makes people angry, but I will uh, openly admit that my first two years on the job, I thought this is one of the dumbest requirements I've ever heard in my life, that if a kid can prove they're getting their vaccine in two months, why should we be kicking them out of school? So I told kids to stay in school and the state fined us because we didn't follow the law and kick them out of school until they got the vaccine. The appointment was not good enough. So uh, since that time, we've been strictly following the rule because they like to watch us like a hawk because we were trying to work with families to keep kids in school. Uh, but the state doesn't really seem to care about that when it comes to the vaccination requirements. So please, uh, our school nurses can help uh, find some locations that can do the immunizations if you need them for you in a, in a quick fashion. Uh, but September 22nd is that deadline. And each, uh, there is, a, I've blogged about it a few times. Our website does have the, the chart that shows what grades they need the immunizations and when they have to have them by. So uh, please, 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 we urge you to, to uh, take care of that if you have to. Uh, next thing, just want to let the public know that after, uh, we're going to stream this meeting and we're going to stream the next meeting. However, following that next October meeting, we're no longer going to stream our meetings. All meetings will be done in person. Uh, there will be no more virtual viewing purpose. Uh, we are one of the only districts left around the state doing the streaming thing. There's a whole host of requirements that go along with streaming that, quite honestly, uh, in order to stream meetings for a whole year, it's the equivalent of hiring a teacher or not having a teacher. So uh, the board has discussed this for several weeks now, probably better part of a month. Uh, and I think we all kind of agree that it's better to have money to pay for our people than pay for technology for folks to uh, eat the Doritos and the pregame at home and watch us uh, talk. So this meeting and the next meeting will be streamed. Uh, after that, we'll be live and in person, and we are working on trying to find a model to get back to the schools and rotate through the schools instead of bringing everything to the boardroom. So uh, in the future, you may also have to pay attention to where we're going to be because you could show up here and you're not going to get in. You might be at the wrong building. So we'll get a schedule out so people know. And then uh, just some dates and reminders between now and the next meeting to be aware of. September 26th is a half day uh, for all students professional learning for our staff. Uh, October 7th is a superintendent's day. That is a Friday. So no school for students October 7th and also no school on Monday, October 10th for Columbus Day, Indigenous Peoples Day. Uh, nice four day weekend for you, Danielle. I hope the weather's nice and you can do something fun. And the last thing I'm gonna mention that's happening uh, before the next meeting on October 11th, Tuesday, October 11th, our entire ninth grade student body is attending an event at SUNY Poly. Uh, it has, I, I think there's upwards of 2,000 ninth graders, uh, probably somewhere in the ballpark of 15 to 20 schools. Uh, we've all committed to send our entire ninth grade class together to do a day of learning about transitioning and, um, uh, and learning as an adolescent from Erin Guell. Uh, she's from California, wrote the book. Um, well, I can't remember the name of the book. It's a movie too. Freedom. Freedom Writers, thank you. Oh, so nice. uh, she'll be here to work with kids. She Westmoreland's done a lot of work with her over the years. Uh, so I thank Rocco McGloria for bringing her here. Uh, but it's going to be a great thing to have our ninth graders kind of go up there, meet other ninth graders from around the region, talk about some things. And uh, it's a full day event. So uh, I, I thank them for doing that. And I'm also pleased to report that um, the host of the event, and I, I don't know if Aaron had anything to do with it, but the host of the event has asked Brian LeBaron to be one of the keynote speakers. The administrators had to submit uh, applications to speak to the ninth graders, and whatever he asked to talk about, they thought his talk would be worthwhile. So Brian will be one of the, the guest speakers for the kids up there, and should be a great day. So I look forward to stopping by and seeing that. It's the first time we've done anything like that in the region, get the ninth graders together and try and try and learn. So. A lot, a lot to digest, but a lot happening between now and uh, October 17th, I think, is our next meeting. So, and that's what I got. Do you do?
Thanks for going to Danielle with the student board member report. Um, so the year has just begun, so there's not much to say. Um, we have started our preparation for homecoming. Um, we've given out permission slips, and now we're currently selling tickets during lunch periods. We started later last week. We will continue throughout this week and next week. And then homecoming will be October 1st. Um, our theme is fairy tales. Um, clubs have started recently last week and have continued on through this week. Um, and I think we're going to try to do a pep rally, which is a first for us. Nice. Good. I know Brian's been trying to do a pep rally for years. Yes. <laughs> yes been trying. Every time he has something to put it together. So I think COVID killed it the past yeah. two years, right? He's mm -hmm. been trying for, for a while to do something like that. Great. And that's about it. Good. Well, welcome, Danielle. Thank, yeah, you. Thank you. All right. And now is the public comment part of the meeting. Um, before we start, I just have to read this little thingy. Please note that speakers will be recognized at the appropriate portion of the agenda in the order in which the cards are received. Board policy limits individual speakers to a period of five minutes. A speaker may request an additional five minutes at the discretion of the board president. Individual names, members of the school district or community should not be mentioned in open session due to privacy laws and protection. And our first and only speaker is Christine Sturries. Oh, no. Elaine, it took me two years as the vice president to learn how to properly run an RTA meeting. So <laughs> <laughs> now it's her problem. <laughs> uh, so Chris Sturries, um, I am a science teacher at RFA, and I am wearing my uh, science teacher at RFA hat. I'm also the president of the RTA, um, but this is primarily my science teacher hat. I wanted to share something with you that has transpired that has my department very concerned about uh, safety. Back in July, uh, second week in July, when I took over my classroom, there were a significant number of chemicals that were in a chemical co uh, cabinet. And so I started the process of trying to figure, it, figure out what we need to do to dispose of the chemicals and such. And of course, there's all kinds of, of rules and regulations about that. So I reached out to uh, the TCs of our department, and uh, one of the TCs is also a chemistry teacher. So she came in, we went through, looked at everything, um, started going through the chain of command with building level, um, administrative levels to try to see what needed to be done next. Uh, we were told by the director of buildings and grounds that we needed to catalog the um, chemicals we received a specific form from BOCES to do so. Chemistry teacher and I did all those steps, had that completed by July 24th. The chemicals were sitting in boxes in my classroom, and we said, you know, obviously these need to be taken care of, disposed of. We're not sure what the next steps are, but we've done, you know, what we needed to do with this process. And so um, our primary concern, of course, was we wanted to be handled before the start of school when kids were going to start showing up in my classroom. So right up until the day before school, which is now almost two months later, the chemicals were still in my room in these boxes. And so we kept reaching out, um, reaching out again to the head of buildings and grounds to figure out where we were going with this. Um, no real response as far as what the plan was. And so the day before school, we were scrambling to find a place to move these to ourselves so that kids would not be coming into a room with uh, chemicals that shouldn't be out. Uh, consulted with the custodians, we didn't want to move them somewhere where kids would be exposed. We didn't want to move them to a custodial space because we weren't sure who would have access. Do they have the proper training, et cetera, for how these chemicals are handled? So after discussion uh, with the custodial staff and the chemistry teacher and I, um, we actually ended up putting them in our office because we figured it was the safest place to make sure that the people who really knew how to handle them would be the ones that would have um, access and no students would be exposed, custodial staff, et cetera. So um, last week we reached out again. There's probably been no, no less than 10 outreaches by the TCs of our department to the head of buildings and grounds. Um, they have been unresponsive. A message was sent to them that we needed these chemicals out ASAP um, and there was still no response. 
So we advised that we were going to file a PESH complaint. Um, I said I would be coming to speak publicly to the board about this issue and that um, putting my RTA hat back on that we'd be filing a grievance for unsafe practices. And so um, I hope that I wouldn't have to speak to do this, but it's been two months and some of these chemicals are things that they don't even sell anymore because they're so unsafe and they've been sitting in boxes in our science office. So I'm hoping that um, something can be done. We appreciate the support we've received from upper administration at central office and our building administrators and our custodial staff, but the head of buildings and grounds has been unresponsive and has not um, met our needs. So we're asking for your help in getting him to meet those needs. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Departmental reports are next. Chris, do you have anything this evening? Any brief updates? Brewer? No, no you're good. I'm good. Anything in finance, World Rob? Uh, Jeff has uh, one of his kids had an event tonight. Uh, the only thing really to report from people operations is uh, still looking for a technology teacher and still have it opening in RFA uh, and continue to struggle with food service. Um, it's tough to find. Custodial workers are tough to find. Uh, and the teacher aid thing is improving. We were down to six teacher aides last Friday. Uh, I have I, I got back late this afternoon from the conference, so I did not get an update for that. But um, we were down to six, and so we're hopeful that we can continue to hire up on the teacher aid side and just get that word out that we're looking for more teacher aids, but that continues to, to improve. Uh, other than that, things are going going pretty well. Uh, Gans of Board Assistant Principal started today, so we're fully staffed once again by for administrators, uh, which is great to have. And then um, that's where we're standing with people operations. Nice and easy. I'm going to go into the study session, talk about capital improvement update. Yes, so thank you. We have Nate Van. We are construction manager here from CNS Companies. Uh, just to provide a quick update on where we stand on our uh, capital improvement project, 2019 capital improvement project. Right? Not yeah. the 2022. We're Don't get them confused. Them, cover them all. No, the 2022 is not even in the hopper yet. <laughs> So um, thank you, Peter. Uh, for those of you who don't know, like Peter said, Nathan, we from CNS companies. Um, we've been working uh, as the district yes. construction manager since uh, 2019 was our first project, well, 2018 um, for development uh, of the 2019 project. So um, this high level, uh, the 2019, that's the $14.2 million authorization that was voted on and approved in December of 2019. Um, the phase one work, you can see that was really the turf and track replacement at the stadium. We also did some masonry restoration uh, work above the main office at um, RFA uh, to address the roof leaks uh, that were at the main office. The phase two project, really the highlight of that is the renovation of the pool space. Uh, again, our, at RFA, there was uh, some other um, interior renovations, stairwells, um, there was some exhaust fans, things like that added to that, but really the pool renovation was the highlight of that. Um, we did add in the shoring uh, of the stadium um, structure that was an emergency project that we pulled together last June, um, middle of June, uh, so that the stadium could continue to be used. And then we have a phase three uh, project of 2019, which is, um, if you look in the middle box there, um, really focused on doing. Uh, well, it's really, there's two parts to it. So one part is a door and hardware replacement that is currently taking place at RFA. So there are, I think, 40 something interior and exterior door combinations that are being changed out um, throughout RFA. You'll see uh, in the agenda tonight, there should be a resolution for a change order 
uh, in the amount of 20, I think it's 25,900 and something um, to uh, add power and access control um, to that scope of work. Uh, that work um, was procured off a uh, cooperative purchasing agreement. So the district has options when you to either bid work or purchase through cooperative purchasing. There are certain scopes that you can't purchase off cooperative purchasing. Um, we had a, we have an electrical contractor under contract. Um, so we're writing him or writing them a change order um, to, to assist with the power and access control for the work bought off access or off the cooperative purchasing. Um, the second part of the phase three project, um, we collected bids unsuccessfully a week ago. Um, uh, we had, we did not get a general contractor to bid on the project. Uh, we had five electrical contractors bid. Um, and the scope of that is additional masonry restoration, uh, really the replacement of the through wall flashing around the perimeter of our effect. Um, and then depending on funds, uh, either additional roof replacement, uh, replacement of the scoreboard at the stadium. Um, there is um, some uh, ADA screening underneath the main stairwell at RFA, replacement of the loading dock uh, also at RFA. Um, and then if we really get lucky, then we'll do some additional sidewalk replacements at RFA as well as part of the phase three. So we are re-scoping um that phase three bid package we will bring back um probably not next month but the month after uh recommendation on how we're going to put those bids back out there's a couple of different things that we're looking at one would be using cooperative purchasing um so that we can get work started uh early in the spring of 2023 on the on that work uh, and try to be out of 2019 capital improvement um, by the end of this school year. So June of 2023, we'd like to be wrapped up with 2019 and have that one um, off the uh, off the dock, if you want. So that's 2019 uh, high level. Any questions on that one? Could you send us a copy of this in our email? Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll forward this on the route. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. And then um, just quickly on the 2022 capital improvement. So that's the one that was, that's the 22.6 authorization that was voted on and approved in March of this year. Uh, we are um, working through design concepts uh, with Lavella, who's the district's architect. Um, and uh, we plan to submit that to state ed by the end of this year so that we can start construction uh, of the um, baseball stadium, multi-use turf uh, field uh, below RFA um, next spring. That's it, nice quick update. Yeah. Any questions? So what's the process if you guys come up with a design, yep. then what? Approval processes to go through before it gets you sent it to the state. Does Peter look at it? Does we look at it? Or yeah, we can give you um, we can give you an update. I mean, we're working with Peter, Rob, and Alex on the design concepts and details. Uh, we had an initial meeting with the athletic directors uh, and members of the athletic staff on um, some of their desires um, for that field. So we're incorporating all of that. Um, and yeah, usually different. I just let the architects design and tell us what it is that needs to yeah, be done because yeah. I don't have a clue. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I was just curious what, <laughs> what make the process their money. was before. Yeah, they, they usually will, they'll usually show us designs and things that they are going to submit to SED in this thing to kind of go. I would say once we get things confirmed, then we would be able to share along. Okay. I really want to share beyond the concepts. That right. Want. right. Okay. Okay. But then it'll go to SCD, be approved by SCD, and then we can bid after the approval from SCD. So once once it goes to SCD, um, can there be any variation once it comes back with the approval? Yeah, there can be. It can. I mean, the scope can't change. 
a lot. Yeah. Significantly. I mean, what the voter approved or what the voter, what's included in the referendum has to say. Right, right. Um, yeah, we can so make some little change. detail here. Okay. okay. Yep. Thanks, Nate. Absolutely. Thank you. Thanks, Nate. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. On to the report of the clerk. I don't know what I was reading. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It's short at least. Huh? It's not long. It's not <laughs> okay, Karen. It's not policy. All right, this is my short. first time, so bear with me. First time for her. Uh, resolution to award RFP Internal Auditing Services 2022, uh, August 12th, whereas the Rome City School District solicited requests for proposals for internal auditing services, and whereas requests for proposals were duly advertised and opened on August 12th, 2012 by Ian Conley and witnessed by David Drido. The bidders have met all the specifications uh, contained with the request for proposals and whereas the request for proposals were compared and reviewed, it is recommended that the RFP be awarded to Mengel Metzger yep. Bar & Co. LLP now therefore be it resolved that the Rome City School District does hereby award the RFP to the vendor shown above effective September 20th, 2022. I move to resolution. Second. Seconded by Ms. Reddick. I was asking, yes. <laughs> oh, yes, I second. Okay. <laughs> Discussion. Yeah, the, the Finance Committee went, went over this and uh, we're, we're okay with the company. Any questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Oh, <laughs> you're so scared. I'm sorry. It's all the same. All right. I'm sorry. Well. And we take so it. <laughs> Just read this whole thing, right? Resolution to accept the consent mm -hmm. agenda mm -hmm. upon the recommendation of the superintendent of school consent agenda be accepted by the Board of Education. You move it. Uh, move it. Second. <laughs> Discussion. And this is on pages three through six. Yes, so. thank you. Thank you. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thanks. Page seven. Go ahead. Okay, finance on page seven. I guess I'll, since I'm the only representative from the finance, I have to do it. <laughs> Action item number one resolution to accept the internal audit for, for 2021 2022. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the 2021 2022 internal audit of purchasing be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Danielle? All in favor? Or discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passes. Action item number two, resolution to approve universal pre-K contract. Resolved that upon a recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the UPK three-year-old service contract for, from the Rome Catholic Preschool, $1,500 per child, be approved by the Board of Education for 2022-23 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Second by John Lino. Uh, discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <clears throat> yes. Action item number three, resolution to approve universal pre-K contract. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the UPK four-year-old service contract from the Rome Catholic Preschool, $800 per child, be approved by the Board of Education for the 2022-23 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Second, Second by John. Mm -hmm. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Four, resolution to approve universal pre-K contract. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the UPK three-year-old service contract for Malt Valley Community Action Head Start, $5,800 per child, be approved by the Board of Education for the 2022-23 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Cassie. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yes. 
Five, resolution to approve universal pre-K contract. Resolve that upon a recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the UPK four-year-old service contract from Mohawk Valley Community Action Head Start, $1,500 per child, be approved by the Board of Education for the 2022-23 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Second. Dr. Fontana. Dr. Fontana. I don't want to do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing Joe, Elena. You're doing wonderful. You're doing fine. Do you <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's passed. Six, resolution to transfer funds within the general fund. Resolve that the following transfers for 2022-23 be made within the funds of the Board of Education. Um, and it's described on item number seven there. And I move the resolution on page seven, I mean. Second. Second and by Danielle. And you discuss um, is it finance too? Mm -hmm. Discussion. Yeah, this is it was accidentally yeah. coded in the special ed codes. It's just moving out of the special ed codes into the social worker codes. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Passed. Oh, more. Yeah, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> <Don't start marching. laughs> <laughs> Action item number seven resolution to amend the construction management services contract. Whereas the Rome City School District, the district previously entered into an agreement dated May 27, 2020, called the agreement that with CNS engineers to collaborate with the project architect, provide construction planning, prepare and update as needed a project schedule, assist with bid solicitation and analysis, <clears throat> coordinate the activities of multiple contractors to meet the milestone dates set forth in a project schedule, and comply with the contract documents provide cost estimating and accounting services, provide project status reports, and provide related professional services in connection with the 2019 capital improvement project. Whereas after the approval of the agreement, the district extended the duration of the project and added a separate phase three, which was not contemplated at the time of the agreement. And whereas in connection with the district's, the district's extension of the duration of the project, construction management services in excess of those covered by the agreement are needed from CNS. And whereas to obtain the additional services, CNS in the district proposed entering into an amendment of the agreement to include the said services for a total project cost for services from CNS in the amount of $715,046. <clears throat> and whereas the school district's legal counsel for RFERN's of PC and CNS had jointly prepared amendment number one to the agreement for the required additional services, which has been submitted to the Board of Education for consideration. And whereas, except as amended by amendment number one, all other terms and conditions of the agreement remain in full force and effect. Now therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Education of the City of Rome District, the Rome City School District, as follows. One, the Board of Education approves amendment number one of the agreement with CNS to provide the additional services outlined therein at the cost and on the terms and conditions stated therein, in addition to the services and fees specified in the agreement. Two, the Board of Education hereby authorizes the president of the board, superintendent of schools, or their designee to enter into an amendment number one on behalf of the school district and substantially the form presented to the Board of Education with such modifications, additions, and revisions, other than a change to the fees or expenses, which as may be approved by the superintendent of schools and legal counsel, which approval shall be conclusively shown by the ex execution thereof and take all actions necessary or convenient to proceed under the contract as amended by amendment number one, connection with the project. Three, upon board of education approval, this resolution shall take effect immediately. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Cassie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Oh, discussion. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Yeah, aye. aye. Opposed? Yes. Number eight, resolution to accept change orders, 2019 capital improvement project. Whereas the Board of Education of the Rome City School District, the Board of Ed, previously authorized its 2019 capital improvement project. 
the project. And whereas during the course of the project, certain exchanges to the work covered by various contracts have been determined by Lavella Associates DPC, the project architect, <clears throat> to be required. And whereas the project architect and the involved contractor will prepare, sign, and submit proposed change orders for the following work. SC Spencer Electric Incorporated, CE-068, PCO-010, provide electrical and access control wiring to exterior doors in the amount of $25,932.50. And where the Board of Education has determined that it is in the best interest of the school district to approve the proposed changes and accept the proposed change orders. Now, therefore, be it resolved as follows. One, the Board of Education approves the changes set out in this resolution. Two, the Board of Education hereby authorizes the President of the Board to sign the change orders on behalf of the Board of Education Take all actions necessary or convenient to proceed under the contracts as amended by the change orders in connection with the project. Three, the Board of Education hereby authorizes the superintendent of schools to sign the New York State Education Department required certification in connection with each change order and take all actions necessary or convenient to satisfy applicable change order certification and filing requirements. Four, upon Board of Education approval, this resolution shall take effect immediately. I move the resolution. Second. Second by chairman. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thanks. And our next committee meeting will be October, Tuesday, October 11th at 9 a.m. Programs, Karen. Oh, we have no agenda items, so that makes it very oh, easy. Nice. I know. <laughs> but um, Chris, I know you sent out a report to teachers today, your curriculum update. Things seem to be moving moving along pretty well it, with the first i know some star testing has been done which yep, yeah. we, we're in the uh, testing cycle right now for starters yep. so that's uh, ongoing um i did get an extension for us with renaissance to continue the pilot of the mayan which is the independent reading piece to um, star so we're going to continue that and we're also going to be pulling some data off of that hopefully share that next at programs meeting um I met with our literacy consultant a little bit. We talked a great deal about phonics at the K-1 level today, uh, taking a look at that. So there's some things that we're going to be involved in that meeting. And at our last meeting, Chris, Chris had brought in some information. I'll make this brief, but I know he spent a lot of time on it. The summer development, the professional development. And so it was, it was interesting to see the teachers' responses, and so you can see what seemed to be working in professional, what didn't, what you know, what needs to be tweaked a little bit. And I think going from forward from that, I think will help with the professional development plan moving forward. So it was interesting to see. So did you want to add anything to that? I think that's uh, no. okay. Right. Yeah. So we're meeting uh, October 11th at um, 4 p.m. Is that still working now that we're down to two? Anybody else like to join education We're taking I'm, new members. <laughs> <laughs> You're taking new members. <laughs> no, I said members on purpose. <laughs> I knew exactly what I was doing. Mm -hmm. so, four works. That's okay, four still works. Okay. All right. Okay. Deep operations. John, can you do that? I can read it. I'll read it. Oh, okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Cal. Um, Action item number one, resolution to oh, non-instructional personnel probationary resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, board of education, their boy I appoints the following non-instructional personnel probationary on page 10 of this agenda. I move the resolution. Any discussion? Now we got a second. Yeah. John, second. Uh, I heard John, it. John, I'm second. just going to like leave. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot get this right around my head. Okay. You're okay, John. Yeah, you're doing, doing fine. Yeah, I'm really not, but thank you. Okay, <laughs> discussion. All in favor. Aye. Aye. We're good. Opposed. Number two, resolution to appoint instructional personnel resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education here by appoints the following instructional personnel. Sarah Scott, Joy uh, Stokes, Gans Clough, a teacher, physical education, BS 30, step nine plus MS, and a salary of 57. 040 prorated effective date 10 12 2022 to 10 11 2025. Patrick Karen Bellamy, teacher of physical education, BS 30, step nine plus MS, and a salary of 57090. 
um, effective date 9 7 2022 to 9 6 2026. The expiration date of this above proba probationary appointment for classroom teaching position is tentative and conditional only, except to the extent required by the applicable provisions of the section 2509 of the educational law in order to be grant granted tenure, a classroom teacher or principal must receive composite or overall annual professional performance review ratings pursuant to section 3012-C and or 3012-D of the educational law either effective or highly effective in at least three of the four preceding years. And if the classroom teacher or principal receives an ineffective composite of overall rating in the final year of probationary period, the teacher shall not be eligible for tenure at this time. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Danielle. Any discussion? Yeah, just this is minor and you probably don't have the answer to this, Peter, but I think it's probably a typo on the salaries. So we're both BS 30 step nine. Fifty dollar difference. I saw that too, but then I said that he started at different dates. Maybe that was the. the uh, one's priority, maybe. It's a question for Jeff. Yeah, it could, I mean, just look, it could just, be a yeah. typo, and there could be something in there with yeah. credits. Yeah. yeah. So just, I'm just bringing it to your attention so you can just check it out before yes, it's thank final. You. I, think. I was going to ask uh, why the different effective end dates. One is three years and one is four. Uh, one of uh, Sarah's already been a tenure teacher, okay. so her probationary period is shorter. Thank you. You're welcome. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's, oh, passes. Oh, no, I just, it just struck me that four schools. It's a lot. Yeah, that's, yeah. yeah. I just wanted to put that on the record. I just didn't get to it quick enough. Number three, resolution to appoint sporting event personnel that upon the recommendation resolved that the upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby appoints the following sporting event personnel. Michael Calagerio, clock operator, $25 an event, effective date 9-1-2022. Um, I move the resolution. Second. So, second by Cassie. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Number four, resolution to appoint non instructional personnel provisional resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby appoints the following non instructional personnel provisional. Renee O'Connell, business office, principal accountant clerk, at a salary of $46,368, prorated, effective date 9 14, 2022. Justin Rutz, transportation bus, bus dispatcher driver. 58076 prorated daily effective date 9 20 2022. I move the resolution. Second. Second by John. Any discussion? Just, just to, now, Renee, is that doing the payroll? Is that, is that the position? Uh, Renee, yeah, Rob, Renee's moving the payroll, correct? Filling in for Kim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Number five, resolution to create. All in favor. Aye. 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 Sorry, I was drinking. Lana Misfit today. Number five, re resolution to create positions resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education creates the following positions library media specialist. I move the resolution. Second. Second by John. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Number six, resolution to accept separation agreement that upon the recommendation of the superintendent school, the Board of Education approves the separation agreement and general release with a tenure teacher. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Daniel. Yeah. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number seven, resolution to grant tenure that upon the recommendation of superintendent schools, the Board of Education hereby grants the following individual tenure. Aaron Flasberg, supported learning teacher effective October 21st, 2022. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Cassidy. <laughs> Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Number eight, resolution. No, no, no. Skip number we oh. oh, yes. So number eight is deleted. Mm -hmm. Sorry, thanks. Number nine, 
Resolution to appoint intramural personnel resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education here by appoint the following intramural personnel. David Petrelli, um, spring morning, five days a week at RFA at a failure of $1,600. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Karen. Any discussion? What is spring morning? Just so before school starts, those are the intramurals with the kids that are there early. Early. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So initially, I thought that he was replacing Ted, but this is a different position then? It's an addition. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Number 10, resolution to adjust position resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the following position adjustment. Leo Smith at Stokes, school psychologist, 55%, school to site school psychologist, 50%. Effective date 926-2022. I move the resolution. Second. Second by John. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And our next committee meeting is October 11th, um, 2022 at 3 This will be a busy day. We might as well just take up the Yes. Don't you worry, Elena. I got you. <laughs> well, why don't we take there's a few pages? I mean, I'll help you too. So your okay. throat will get dry. That peach shake will be pumpkin pie. Pumpkin pie. That's right. Pumpkin. All right. Policy action items. Number one, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2342, agenda preparation and dissemination. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy number 2342. Agenda preparation and dissemination be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by John. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Action item number two resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2260 advisory committees. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy number 2260 advisory committees be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Karen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. Action item three, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2140, board member removal from office. Resolved that upon recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy number 2140, board member removal from office be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Danielle. Any discussion? Can I just state, we didn't do this last time, we have an abnormally large number of policy readings. The next, this last meeting, this meeting, and the next travel because we're shifting our entire policy manual. We've done a redo. So people that haven't been paying attention for the past years wouldn't know that this is abnormal, but just want to state mm -hmm. that for the record that we've been shifting our entire policy manual. So you're going to see a lot of updated policies and policy changes. It's not that, not mm -hmm. that everything was wrong. We're just doing everything, <laughs> moving it. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's probably good to mention that, that yeah. everything is being shifted over, numbers are changing. It's not just <laughs> true. all of a sudden all these things have got to be fixed and they're wrong. It's just come get to re-up the policies. Yeah, that's all. Up shop. That's right. Up Karen. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I think it's great. We're taking recommendations from NIDSA and yes. you know, so I think that's important for people to know that that you know we're looking at those and then we're adopting our policies and making changes <laughs> where we see necessary to move forward. Yeah. You're doing a great job. Thanks, Ken. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Number four, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2121, board member qualifications. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy number 2121, board member qualifications be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Karen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. <clears throat> number five, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2220, board officers. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy number 2220, board officers, be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Number six, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2120.1, candidates and campaigning. 
Resolved that upon the recommendations of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy number 2120.1, candidates and campaigning be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. 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 Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Number seven, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2360 minutes. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy 2360 minutes be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Karen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Eight. Resolution of resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2150, filling board vacancies. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy number 2150, filling board vacancies, be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Danielle. Any discussion? On favor? Aye. Opposed? Do I move the second reading? Sure. Um, actually, number nine. Resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy 2340, notice of meetings. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools to second reading and adoption of policy 2340 notice of meetings be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yes. Resolution 10. Resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy 2330 executive sessions. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy 2330 executive sessions be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Resolution 11, resolution to accept the second meeting adoption of policy 2351 quorum. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy 2351 quorum be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Cassie. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. 12. Resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy 2310 regular meetings. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy 2310 regular meetings be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Danielle. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. 13, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy 2352 rules of order. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy 2352 rules of order be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Cassie. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. 14, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy 2270 school attorney. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy 2270 school attorney be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by John. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. 15. Resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy 2100 school board legal status. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy 2100, school board legal status be accepted to be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. 16. Resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy 2120, school board elections. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy 2120 school board elections be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Pass. <clears throat> 17. Resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy 2110. School board powers and duties resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy 2110 school board powers and duties be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Danielle. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Yes. I'm going to do a little bit more than. Okay. Yeah. You think we have, I can have, is that the last page? No. no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. I'll take my sip going. Okay. <laughs>
18, resolution to accept the second reading adaption of policy number 2160, school district officer and employee code of ethics. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adaption of policy number 2160, school district officer and employee code of conduct be accepted by the board of education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. 19, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2110-E, school board powers and duties exhibit. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy number 2110-E, school board powers and duties exhibit, be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Karen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. 20, resolution to accept the second reading and adoption of policy number 2320 special meetings. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the second reading and adoption of policy number 2320 special meetings be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Danielle. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. 21, resolution to accept the first reading of policy number 2350, board meeting procedures. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy number 2350, board member procedures, board meeting procedures. I just got to fix that one. Should say meeting. Yeah. <laughs> procedures be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Karen. Any discussion? And just a quick point of information so folks know uh, when this goes to a second reading, this does have a substantial change to the meeting procedures. There uh, will be moving to a two public comment period. Again, first public comment period for agenda items only, second public comment period for anything that's just a general uh, statement or concern. That's a procedural and, change. And how did how do how does the public see the agenda before? It's online. So 24 just hours, 24 yep. hours in advance, and then if people want to comment on that, they can. Yep. And then the second comment is any other item. Yep. Okay. <clears throat> that be, is that back to back? Is that how we will do it? Or? No. Nope. Uh, agenda item comments are at the beginning of the meeting. Uh, any other general comments are at the end of at the meeting. End, okay. yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, something happened. Nope. He just has a little tickets. Thanks, Nate. Yeah, take care. Uh, 22, resolution to accept the first reading of policy number 2250, board committees. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy number 2250, board committees be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Karen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. Resolution to accept the first reading of policy number 2120.2, voting procedures. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy number 2120.2, voting procedures be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Karen. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution to accept 24. Resolution to accept the first reading of policy number 2520, board member training. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy number 2520, board member training, be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. 25, resolution to accept the first reading of policy number 2521, school board conferences, conventions, and workshops. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy number 2521, school board conferences, conventions, and workshops be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Yes. Let's try to finish this off. 26. Oh. Resolution to accept the first reading of policy 2700. That was good. Board staff communications. Resolve that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy 2700 board and staff communications be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes. 27. Resolution to accept the first reading of policy 30. 3000 goals and objectives for administration. 
resulted upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy 3000 goals and objectives for administration be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second to Cassie. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Yes. 28. Resolution to accept the first reading of policy 3100, superintendent of schools. Resolved upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy 3100, superintendent of schools, be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by John. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Yes. 29. Resolution to accept the first reading of policy 2510, new board member orientation. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy 2510, new, new board member orientation be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. 30. Resolution to accept the first reading of policy 1050, annual district election and budget vote. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy 1050, annual district election and budget vote, be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. 31. Resolution to accept the first reading of policy 0300 accountability. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy 0300 accountability be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Question. Second by John. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. And the last one, resolution 32. Resolution to accept the first reading of policy 1000, community relation goals. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the superintendent of schools, the first reading of policy 1000, community relations goals, be accepted by the Board of Education. I move the resolution. Second by Kelly. Any discussion? Yes, this should be community relations vision, not goals. Yeah. Just a typo. Community relations vision. vision. Yeah, we made, we had a discussion that, um, Goals is basically going to be, am I saying this correctly? It was going to be the smart type of goals, the, the measurable. Mm -hmm. So we just not, vision, to not, not to be confused with that. Yeah. So that's why it's visions instead of goals. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. All right, so uh, we meet this Friday for our next committee meeting. Um, we have a couple policies still pending, um, just getting drafts from NISBA on a couple, uh, but we keep forging ahead. So um, I'm working at, with Karen on a couple and thank you for everyone that's responded uh, for feedback for the initial. You'll get to hear them at first reading, hopefully next board meeting. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Marathons. Right. Yeah. Miscellaneous business. Number one, resolution to accept the resignation of a Board of Education member. Resolved with the submission of her resignation, the Board of Education hereby accepts with regret the resignation of Anna Megarell from the Board of Education effective September 11th, 2022. I move the resolution. Second. Seconded by Kelly. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. Thank you for your service, Anna. Uh, number two, resolution to combine with the Clinton Central School District Girls Ice Hockey. Resolved that upon the recommendation of the Superintendent of Schools, the Board of Education hereby approves the Rome City School District and the Clinton Central School District combining their girls ice hockey for the 2022-2023 school year. I move the resolution. Second. Second. Seconded by Danielle. Any discussion? Thank you to Clinton for continuing to do this. It's a great oh, program. Nice. Yeah, we're happy yeah. to participate. Do we provide the transportation out to the Clinton uh, Arena or? No, there's it's all self transport. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? It passes. Um, discussion item? Discussion item, just filling the board vacancy. So. And Joe had mentioned that the uh, 
we just had a brief discussion if the board had a direction they wanted to go with filling the vacancy. You know, last last year it was filled through an interview process, and I had a brief conversation with Joe. And it sounds like that's the direction that the group wants to go again this year. Yes. Just need to try and solidify some dates, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Yes. So I would I would recommend that uh, I'll work with Sandy and we'll get with Joe when he's feeling better, and we'll do a doodle. Probably get an email out to you guys trying to figure out what dates would work. Uh, but I think last year. It was a pretty aggressive timeline, mm -hmm. if I don't if I recall correctly. So we'll set up some uh, dates for applications due, letter letter of intent or letter of desire, and, and I think resume. We did last year. Do you do resume last year? I can't remember. Yes, resumes. Resume. Yeah. yeah. So we asked for letter of intent, resume, and then uh, uh, we'll set up a date to review uh, who the board wants to interview, set up the interviews, and move forward with that probably pretty quickly. So okay. we'll, we'll do that through email. We'll get you guys uh, trying to figure out how to sync up calendars and get it done quick. Thank you. You're welcome. So it'll be an interview process Thank again, you, a blind interview. We are done with the executive okay. session. That's correct. Um, motion to adjourn the meeting. So move. Okay. Oh, wait, we did that discuss. When we had a list of things to bring up <laughs> our business. Oh, I skipped this. Uh, See, I was doing no, something. Yeah, no, it's okay. I was. I was, I was excited about it. I was thumbing through something. So <laughs> I said, it can't be done yet. Just a few couple of quick things, um, mostly stemming out of policy. Um, we need to start working on goal setting. Um, so Karen has some great material from last year that I think can help us jumpstart, but we need to, um, first part of that would be setting up an ad hoc. Um, you're probably more equipped to talk about this part than I am. Well, if, I don't know if we have to do, well, last year we did an ad hoc um, to help the board write the superintendent's goals, and we need to do it this year so we can get, get going on it. So um, I guess just, I will. Okay, thank you. I guess I'm in by default, so. <laughs> I will also. Okay, so we have an ad hoc committee. All right, so we can, the three of us can get together. I think we have a good start with from last year, so I don't think it's going to be too long, but is the, I don't know if we need a resolution on that, Peter, or just, can we just ad hoc do it? I don't think we did a resolution last year. I think we yeah, just kind of got yeah, together yeah. and, yeah. yeah. You guys, the, the group took a lead and then went to the board. If we did, like That's a draft done, yeah, yeah. 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 And then um, a couple things that go along with, um, so we're obviously working on the evaluation policy, um, just making sure that Kelly, John, and I, and Danielle, if you do not already have access to Peter's contract, and then uh, making sure we have access to super eval, um, just to make sure that we're ahead of the game there. Um, and then the other policy related item that we wanted to ask about was um, where can we find our Title I plan? I, should, I probably should have asked you during policy, so I apologize. There is no Title I plan, it's just the application you submit in the portal. Okay. So it used to be a paper application, it doesn't exist anymore, it's just online questions that they have to answer and submit. Is there still a general, so they could have an idea. Well, I think we were trying to work on what we have to do for the policy. So we needed kind of like a structure of how to fill in the blanks, so to speak, or at least think about what should go in the blanks without seeing what the state requires for Title I. We know there's some regulations for what needs to be in there, but we just to kind of give us some structure to help with the, the policy. Yeah, we can probably print the questions off. Okay. So we can have that for Friday. Okay. okay. Um, and then the other random uh, thing that we were talking about is um, we know that the diversity, um, equity, and inclusion group is going uh, for the school year. So I just wanted to check on do we have like yearly goals or will we be hearing report outs around like what kind of was going on during the month and like any progress? around that there's progress presentation set up within their agreement from last year as part of the rfp we set up targets and times so they're going to come uh, chanel's going to come and talk about what they're doing okay when did the committee meeting start 
Uh, they should be third, starting third, towards the end of the month. I think it's third, 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 no, third, that's third, not third. the committee meeting. That's just a general community conversation. Oh, okay. yeah. 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 Sorry, but yeah. So it should be starting the end of this month. You said. Correct. Yeah. But the difference is, um, and you got to, I'm not going to sit on the committee this year and the board can't sit on the committee by law. Board members can't be involved in when committees like when? that. Uh, it's how it sits in the law. We just never followed it. We learned so it now last year. No, we learned it last year when we were reading through things about committees and what you can and can't do. Board members are not supposed to sit on community committees and ad hoc committees like that. So what law? It's in, it's in the law, but we were reading through when we learned about committee, when we were reading up on all the different committees that we have to have and can have. I'll get the I'll get the page number for y'all. Okay. It's um, and I'm not gonna sign on this year either. We have about 30 people we got signed up for, and I'm gonna let other folks do the work and tell us what they need from us. So you said um check the contract, right? For when the schedule yeah, I can okay. get I can send you the uh, outline of what they're doing this year, but between pref professional developments, the community conversations they're going to hold, the building visits, and the um, task force work. That would be awesome. Thank you. I'm really done now. Okay. Welcome to adjourn. Thank you. Okay. All in favor? All in favor. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Almost got it. <laughs> you did a great job. Yeah. You did a wonderful job. Don't worry, don't have